So I want to explain to you about standard form. Often in a question in the paper, it'll ask you to give the answer in the form a times 10 to the power of n, where 1 is less than or equal to a, which is less than 10. That's exactly how they'll write it. That piece of information right there is exactly how they may ask for it in the exam. So basically what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to write ordinary numbers in standard form and take numbers that may be in standard form and write them back into ordinary numbers. There are two key concepts with this, okay? It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. One key thing I want to point out here, we gotta get in the form of something times 10 to the something, all right, that's key. But that first number there has got to be between one and 10, okay? All right, let's delve straight into an example and we'll see exactly how this works. Okay, so to recap, this is the form that is standard form. So take the number 3.6 times 10 squared. That is written in standard form because this number here is between one and 10, yeah, 3.6, and then it's times 10 to a power. So this is quite straightforward, 3.6 times 10 squared, you can always do this on the calculator, uh, but it is going to be 360. Your decimal will move two places, making it bigger. So 360 is your answer. Take, for example, 9.8 times 10 to the power of 4. Pause the video there now and see if you can write that into an ordinary number. That is it in standard form. Our number here is between 1 and 10, and then it's times 10 to a power, okay? And so the answer is 98000. Zero, zero, zero. Again, you can always fall back to the calculator to get your correct answer on this, all right? Watch out for an example where maybe you are asked, is this in standard form. And of course, straight away we spot we have 42.3. 42.3 is not between 1 and 10. So as this stands, this is not in standard form. If I was to put it in standard form, I would have to bring that back so that the decimal place would be between the 4 and the 2. But if I'm doing that, obviously I would have to multiply by an extra power of 10. So now 4.23 times 10 to the power of 4 is in standard form. Now, if you have a power that is negative, then what's going to happen is rather than the number uh, become bigger, the number is going to become smaller. Again, you can rely on your calculator to help you out here. Um, if you forget this, you want to just make sure that you are accurate. Again, we are written in standard form here because our 3.6 is between 1 and 10, and we have times 10 to the power of something. So that is correct. It's in standard form. If I wanted to write that then as an ordinary number, the decimal that was here is going to go back two places, and it would be 0 0.036 is the number. And obviously, it is a smaller number when you have 10 to the power of a minus. Okay. Take, for example, then 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Pause the video. Write down what you think that would be as an ordinary number. And of course, we have the decimal point here. And it's going to move 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 0 0.00098. Okay, so now we have a better understanding of standard form and numbers that are in standard form, converting them back into an ordinary number. Now what we want to do is take an ordinary number and put it in standard form. So the first thing you want to do is decide where you're going to put your decimal so that that first number has to be between 1 and 10. So in this case, 
we would need to put the decimal between the seven and the six to make that into a number that is between one and 10. And now, if you have it between the seven and the six, how many places would it need to move or multiply by 10 to the power of what would get it back to 76,000 then? And it would be times 10 to the power of four. Okay, so try the following question. Pause the video and see if you can get it yourself. Let's try 8,600. And so again, you'd need the decimal point in between the eight and the six, and then you would be multiplying by 10 to the power of three. Again, try this question for yourselves. If you had 146,000, what would that be in standard form? And so you'd want to put the decimal point between the one and the four. Don't forget the six, you still need to put that in there. If the point is here, we will need to multiply by 10 to the power of five. Okay, and now let's try uh, smaller numbers. Let's try 0 0.007. And here, if we want to write this in standard form, where would the decimal have to be? Well, to get that number between one and 10, I would have to take the number as seven. And if I'm taking it as seven, the decimal point is now at the end. So how many places would it need to move to make it smaller, because we're moving to the left, in order to get it back to where it is in the original number. So I would need to multiply by 10 to the power of a minus three. Got to make the number smaller, so it's going to the left. So it's 10 to the power of minus three would give me 0 0.007. Now the beauty of these questions is you can always check this on the calculator to be sure that you have it correct. You can always do certain calculations that are in standard form on the calculator. There's nothing stopping you doing that but you've got to make sure that you can do those conversions and be sure that you're right. Let's try another one and you can pause the video uh, and see how you get on with it and then press play at uh, 0 0.00053. So where would you need to put the decimal in order to make the number between one and 10? That's really important. So I would have to have it as 5.3. If the decimal's here, it will move one, two, three, four to make it smaller. So 10 to the power of minus four. Okay, one last question. Pause the video, try that one yourselves, put it in standard form. And so to make that number between one and 10, I would have to put the decimal point here, 7.19, and how many places would it move? It would be times 10 to the power of one, two, three, four, to the left, making it smaller. So 7.19 times 10 to the minus four.